welcome to online worship with Irving Park Lutheran Church this second Sunday of the Easter season. Today's service is a special one put together by our leaders at the Metropolitan Chicago Synod with a sermon by our bishop, Nikhil Curry. The service reflects the diversity of Lutherans throughout the Chicago land area and how we are united by God redeemed by God to live lives of resurrected grace. Next Sunday, April 18th, here at our home branch, here at Irving Park Lutheran Church, we're going to have another outdoor worship service. These were such a delight on Palm Sunday and Easter. On Sunday, April 18th, our outdoor service will be held in our auxiliary lot or gravel lot, which for this season we are renaming the Grotto. And before and after the service, the sanctuary will be open for private meditation. If you're not able to join us in person, the service will be live streamed from our YouTube channel. So you can participate in it as it happens or watch it anytime after. Blessings to you wherever you worship this week. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Welcome, dear church, and blessings to you in this Easter season. My name is Pastor Christina Garrett-Klein, and in addition to serving as pastor of Edgebrook Lutheran Church on the northwest side of Chicago, it's also my privilege to serve as the chairperson of our Synod's worship and liturgy team. Before we begin our time of worship together, I just want to give thanks to God for our bishop and our Synod staff, for the rest of our worship and liturgy team, as well as for all of our worship leaders, all of our musicians, all of our praise dancers, everyone who is able to join in putting together such a beautiful and meaningful worship service for the Synod for this day. So we give thanks to God for them, and we give thanks to God for you. We begin our time of worship shouting our alleluias, singing our alleluias, and remembering God's promise to us of new life through thanksgiving for baptism. Bendita sea la Santísima Trinidad, un solo Dios, la fuente de agua viva, la roca que nos dio vida, nuestra luz y nuestra salvación. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Unidos a Cristo en las aguas del bautismo, estamos revestidos con la misericordia y el perdón de Dios. Demos gracias por el don del bautismo. Te damos gracias, oh Dios, porque en el principio tú nos creaste a tu imagen. Nos colocaste en un jardín con corrientes del agua. En el desierto tú prometiste agua abundante para el viento y nos diste agua de la roca. Cuando nos sabíamos el camino, tú nos enviaste el buen pastor para que nos llevara a aguas de reposo. En la cruz, tú nos lavaste desde el costado herido de Jesús. Y en este día, tú nos riegas nuevamente con el agua de vida. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy all who thirst and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water. 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. La gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el amor de Dios y la comunión del Espíritu Santo sea con todos ustedes. Y también contigo. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
us pray. Oremos. Dios Todopoderoso, con gozo celebramos el día de la resurrección de nuestro Señor. Por la gracia de Cristo en medio de nosotros, nos permite demostrar el poder de la resurrección en todo lo que decimos y hacemos. Por Jesucristo, nuestro Salvador y Señor, quien vive y reina contigo y con el Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios, ahora y para siempre. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy Easter, Church. I'm Pastor Amy Wigert, and this is the children's message for the week after Easter. We're remembering today that Jesus is alive. And in the gospel story today, Jesus shows up in the middle of where his friends have gathered. And we read that they were afraid. The gospel says they were filled with fear. Can you imagine it? They were filled with fear all the way up to the top. Jesus is there with his friends, and he does this interesting thing. Jesus breathes on them. I have to be honest, and I have to say, every time I hear that, Jesus breathed on his friends, a little part of me thinks, you, I'm not sure about that. What would it have been like if you were there in that room and Jesus showed up and Jesus breathes on you and the rest of his friends? I kind of wonder what Jesus' breath was like. Probably not great. He'd just been dead. But something happens in that room. Jesus tells the disciples after he breathes on them, receive the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, peace be with you. Jesus wants to give us peace. There have been plenty of things this past year that maybe fill us with fear. But Jesus shows up in the middle of it all. In the middle of all the ew and the oh no and the ouch and the, that really hurts. Parts of life. But God can change our fear into peace. And we're reminded today, or maybe we're hearing for the very first time, that we can show the power of God in all we say and all we do. That how things are today isn't always how things will be. And that God makes it different because God shows up in the middle of us. And God lives with us all the time, no matter what. Happy Easter. Let's pray. God, you know sometimes we're fearful and sometimes we're peaceful. Remind us that you're with us always and together there's nothing we can't do. And all God's children said, Amen. Primera lectura, Hechos 4, 32 a 35. Todos los creyentes, que eran muchos, pensaban y sentían de la misma manera. Ninguno decía que sus cosas fueran solamente suyas, sino que eran de todos. Los apóstoles seguían dando un poderoso testimonio de la instrucción de, del Señor Jesús, y Dios los bendice muchos a todos. No había entre ellos ningún necesitado, porque quienes tenían entrenos o casas los venían y el dinero lo ponían a disposición los apóstoles para repartirlo entre todos según las necesidades de cada uno. Palabra de Dios, palabra de vida, demos gracias a Dios. Oh, oh, oh. 
A reading from 1st John. We declare to you what was heard from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, 
His disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Death is never easy. The disciples were exhausted and frightened. After years of faithfulness and striving together, this was it. This was their end. Here they sat at the table they gathered around so many times before, reflecting on time well spent in community, remembering the missions and miracles in which they took part. Here they sat, recalling the feasting they celebrated as they gathered to consume and internalize the words of Jesus Christ. Here they sat, remembering, recalling, and now feeling quite broken. Here they sat, the members of Grace Lutheran Church in Elmwood Park, Illinois. The people of Grace, a once thriving ministry anchored in a blue collar community were struck like many by the economic downturn of 2008. And though this community tried, fighting for their survival with hearts full of faith and love, the moment was against them. The economy was against them. And they were forced by circumstances beyond their immediate control to have some incredibly difficult conversations. I cannot imagine the weight of grief cursing through the words that was said around this table. I cannot imagine the grief through the prayers and the votes and eventually the decision to close. I can't imagine, and yet, when the words were said, God was also there. When the votes were cast, God was also there. God was there alongside the grief, inside the lament, with the decision and prayers that were lifted up. God was there, walking with their leaders, speaking to and through the community, acknowledging the impending loss and reminding them of the promise that God's faithfulness and presence among us extend far beyond our church walls. God was there reminding them that in Christ, Every end is also a new space to begin. Trusting in Christ's resurrective power, in the midst of their brokenness, leaders of grace decided to live and lean into their death, to embrace the ending that was set before them, trusting that God through them was about to do something life-giving and new. 
in the closing letter from the community dated November 21, 2018. The people of God at Grace testified saying, it is with a sad heart that we had to dissolve our congregation. But we do so trusting that God will guide and enable others to spread God's word and God's love to those in need. In Acts chapter 4, verse 33, the scripture says, grace was upon them all. Today, grace is upon all of us. The gifts of Grace Lutheran Church have extended far beyond their own life together. This year alone, their gifts have served to offer partial scholarships for seminary interns at St. Mark Lutheran Church on the south side of Chicago, St. Andrew Lutheran Church in West Chicago, and Pilgrim Lutheran in conjunction with La Trinidad. Last year, Grace Internship Scholarships were awarded to Holy Family in St. Luke's in Logan Square. In nearly every conference, we have been empowered by these gifts of grace to come alongside at least one congregation and seminarian to make internship more affordable for communities who could use the help. The internships are just one of many ways. We continue to witness the impact of the Grace Lutheran Church community all around us. Grace was upon them all. Thanks be to God for the wisdom faithfulness, generosity, a resurrection communities such as grace. In today's reading, John's gospel records the aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion. Here, in a hidden room, exhaustion and fear give way to good news. Christ is risen indeed as Christ breathes spirit and peace into the disciples, it's as if they too are witnessing the promises of a new vaccine. The community begins to come to life, imagining new ways of being and a whole new reality. And that spirit never stops. In our Acts reading, we witness Christ's spirit even more. Here, the disciples are emboldened to move from their seclusion into public testimonies. The community is stirred up to move from segregated communities into a new kind of togetherness and unity. They move from a group of individuals to one dynamic body. They move from a personal survival mode to a new kind of stewardship, a vision for the common good. In the midst of life beyond death, gifts were laid at the feet of the disciples. In the midst of turmoil, confusion, and transition, Gifts were laid at the feet of the disciples. And no one claimed ownership, says the word. Nothing they had, nothing they shared was their own. It is a natural temptation for us as we participate in congregational life to assume ownership over the gifts of God. It's easy to imagine that our professional successes, which have brokered us monetary wealth, has given us not only authority, but also possession over the gifts of God. Our professional acumen, our physical assets, the health of our bodies that permit us to work, 
our very breath. It is easy to claim these as our own. However, we know that these are the gifts from God. They are not our own. Rather, they are ours to give, to share, steward, to use as the Lord gives us direction for good. Beloved, the hymn books are not ours. The pews don't belong to us. The building is not ours, nor the land. It all belongs to God. For seasons, we are blessed with the responsibility of being stewards over God's gifts. And in other seasons, we're called to simply let go. When by grace we can come to embrace God's world from such a perspective, even in seasons of mourning, there can be excitement at observing the gifts that have been placed at our feet. Even in seasons of loss, there can be joy in taking note of the expansive and expanding gifts of God. Yes, even in seasons of pandemic, there can be joy and seeing God's gifts, and living into our responsibility, distributing those gifts for the renewal and strength of God's people and God's reign as it continues to grow within and far beyond us. Grace Lutheran lives on through its stewarding of God's good gifts by blessing seminarians, existing congregations, new congregations, a camp, a college, those without homes, a food pantry, a nursing home, and even more for seasons to come. Grace is upon us all. How are you being a good steward of what you've been entrusted with? What has God placed at your feet in this time of strange transition? Is it a powerful testimony, a gift of time, a unique perspective, an opportunity to model peace, the ability to forgive? What is it? Look at your feet. What gifts have been laid there before you? May God reveal to you the seasons that are in front of you. And may God reveal to you the gifts which are before you. As God calls you and your community to share and to steward them for the good of all. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. En unión con toda la iglesia, confesamos nuestra fe usando las palabras del credo Nicea. With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human for our sake. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Plegarias de intersección. Viviendo en Cristo, resucitado por el poder del Espíritu Santo, traemos nuestras oraciones a Dios, quien promete escucharnos y responder en amor inquebrantable. Tú llenas de gracia a tu iglesia, oh Dios, une a toda la iglesia en la tierra, para que con un solo corazón testifique de la resurrección de Jesucristo con poder y amor. Dios de misericordia, recibe nuestra oración. Alive, in the race in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in a steadfast love. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Tú diriges las naciones, oh Dios. Guía a todos en autoridad para que pastoreen a sus pueblos en los caminos de tu amor. Derrota en nosotros nuestro impulso de guerra. Otorga la paz de Cristo a quienes están en autoridad y sopla sobre ellos el Espíritu Santo. Dios de misericordia, recibe nuestra oración. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Tú nos brindas compañerismo entre nosotros en las congregaciones del Sínodo Metropolitano de Chicago. Haz brillar la luz de Cristo, resucitando nuestras vidas, para que vivamos en amor mutuo y nuestro gozo sea completo. Dios de misericordia, recibe nuestra oración. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. God of mercy, Receive our prayer. We give you thanks for the people of Irving Park Lutheran Church and pray for those named by this congregation. Anna, Bobby, Randy, Tom, Paul, Lauren, Christina, Joey and Christina, Bill, Jim and Mary, Dave, Michael, Zentra, Judy and Joy, Aoife, Phyllis, Max, Eli and family, Terry, Genia, Kristen, Catherine, Carl, Peggy, Doris, Beth, Sarah, Sherry, Shannon, the family of Deanne, Sonia, the family of Maria, Becky, the family of Rich, Susan, people affected by gun violence, first responders, medical workers, and researchers, are homebound, Angela, Florence, Ross, 
and their caregivers. We also pray for those we name in the silence of our hearts. God of mercy, receive our prayer. En la esperanza de vida nueva en Cristo, levantamos nuestras oraciones a ti, confiando en tu bondad y misericordia interminable. Por medio de Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Amen. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. La paz de Cristo sea siempre con ustedes. The peace of Christ be with you always. Oremos. Let us pray. Dios Santo, vivo y amoroso, te alabamos por crear una tierra de esplendor y por convertirnos en un pueblo tuyo, con todos los santos que han recibido tu palabra. Te adoramos, Dios Santo. Te adoramos, Dios Santo. We praise you for your eternal word, for conquering the force of death, and for raising us up through the resurrection of our Lord, for your word alive among us. We praise you, living God. We praise you, living God. Respira sobre nosotros el Espíritu de Cristo resucitado. Que guiados por tu palabra podamos honrar tu tierra y sus muchos pueblos y servir a todos los necesitados. Por tu palabra que anima nuestra vida pascual, te bendecimos, amado Dios. Te bendecimos, amado Dios. Toda adoración, alabanza y bendición sea para ti, fuente de vida, gobernante de la vida y poder de la vida, hoy y siempre. All worship, praise, and blessing be to you, source of life, ruler of life, and power of life, today and forever. Amen. Unidos en el Espíritu Santo, Oremos como Jesús nos enseñó en el idioma de no, nuestro corazón. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, using the language of our heart. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder y tuya es la gloria, ahora y siempre. Amén. El Señor te bendiga y te guarde. El Señor haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti y tenga de ti misericordia. El Señor vuelva hacia ti su rostro y que te concede su paz. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
paz. Comparten las buenas noticias. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.